Pakistan. Many raising the question as to why the delay, because as far as concerns around the PFI concerned, they're not new. They've been there for years. And more importantly, what happens to outfits like the STPI with Simi also, the concern was that you saw it a new set of regrouping. The name and form changed, but the activities didn't stop. So to answer your first question first, let me share with you what uh, former Home Secretaries uh, told me. Uh, what they said was that earlier too, in the last 10 years or so, repeatedly, this, uh, this file has reached their tables seeking ban on the popular front of India. However, like we have been telling our viewers, it, banning is just step one. Uh, the main uh, test comes when you go before the tribunal, you have to defend your evidence. And uh, one former Home Secretary, in fact, told me that it is difficult to pin it down to PFI. Why is it so? You might uh, convict somebody or have enough evidence to say that person A murdered person B. But how do you uh, make that link between person A and organization X? That linkage was getting difficult because there was no membership form that PFI was getting filled up. There was no record of membership fees, uh, etc. That, that were kept. So that linkage to pin it down, it took time. B, they said uh, that, you know, and this is what former police officials and current police officials in various parts of the country who are dealing with PFI are telling me that it is getting difficult because uh, you need solid evidence. And that evidence came only in, in four cases specifically, uh, one in Assam, one in Islamabad uh, of Telangana and two in Kerala. And once that evidence came up, one that, once that linkages was clear between uh, the people who were carrying out these crimes and the organization per se, that's when government of India moved in. They took their time, collected the evidence, and finally when they felt that the evidence was rock solid, they moved in. Uh, those those countrywide uh, crackdowns were carried out, and based on that and uh, interrogation of the PFI leadership and additional evidence that they had uh, in, you know, captured earlier, the decision uh, to bring in the notification under Section 3 of UAPA was taken. Section 3 of UAPA essentially means you're declared an unlawful organization. Whatever you have said while registering yourself as a society, your activities are different from that. So therefore, you're declared unlawful. To answer your question about SDPI, uh, what we are being told is that uh, the first step will have to be taken by the Election Commission of India uh, to take action against SDPI since it's registered as a political party. It is the political wing of Popular Front of India. Once that happens, if there is more evidence, perhaps a call will be taken whether SDPI deserves to uh, you know, join that list of all PFI affiliates which are now unlawful organizations. Okay, I'll just request my colleagues to stay on with us, both Arunima and Anshul. We also now want to talk to our viewers in terms of what this ban actually means for members of the PFI and the PFI at large. Let's break down all those details. As we said, you've seen a ban come in under the UAP and the timeline is for five years. First is the membership is criminalized. Every member will now be seen under this lens. Four feet of property, that of course will come in as well. Can't organize protests. Again, that right has also now been taken away considering this ban has come in. Seminars, donations, all of that also now has been banned. The route of funding also now has been stopped. No more publications as well for the PFI and its members. As I was pointing out, you also have not just property, but bank accounts that have now been frozen as well. Properties, offices, they've all now been attached as well. As Arunama was also pointing out, agencies for years have been collecting evidence and they've gone by the books. And that is why it's probably taken a bit to come as far as this ban is concerned. There is also now travel curbs on office bearers and members as far as the PFI is concerned. So this is what the ban essentially means for the Popular Front of India and its members. I'll request my colleagues to stay on with us. Some other details also now coming in.